In today's video, I'll guide you in the realization of figured bass for keyboard instruments. In the figured bass question for grade 6 ABRSM, you will have the option of writing for keyboard or for voice. In this video, I will inform you of what to keep in mind when you realize for keyboard instruments. Most of the chords that are written for piano are in four parts. When the bass note is high, however, three-part texture can work very well. Avoid five-part texture or spare them for cadences. Spacing of notes should be done carefully. An interval of an octave between the bass note and next note is acceptable, especially when the bass note is low. On the upper parts, the spacing should be written with consideration that they are to be played on the piano comfortably. To ensure that there are no awkward gaps in the middle of the chords, write the bass part for left hand, bass clef, and the other notes for the right hand, treble clef. When writing for four parts, doubling has to take place when you're realizing any triad. Always follow the provided guidelines. 1. For 5-3 chord, double the bass note. The bass is the tonic of the chord. Or, if not possible to double the tonic, double the 5 of the figuring which is the 5th of the chord. For 6-3 chords, double the 6 from the figure which is the tonic of the chord. You can also double the 3 from the figure. The 5th of the chord. This is usually the doubling rule for 6-3 chords if the interval between the 6 and the 3 forms a perfect 4th. If the interval between the 6 and the 3 forms a diminished 4th, the bass should be doubled instead. For 6-4 chords, always double the bass note, which is usually the 5th of the chord. Always write 4 note chords in full. The only possible exception is 7-5-3 where the 5 can be emitted without losing much color. The top part should be written in a logical and melodic manner. For this reason, it is advisable to write the top part first and then fill in the other two parts between the bass and the top part. To achieve a good melody, avoid repetitive sequences and repeated notes on the top part. To improve your melody writing, studying chorales by Bach will be of immense help. This website is a good place to start from. Embrace contrary motion to avoid consecutive perfect octaves and fifths. This will save you a lot of pain in realizing chord progressions like 2 to 1, 5 to 6 and 6 to 5. When the bass part is held for more than one beat, and no change of harmony is indicated, introduce rhythmic interest. Avoid extending your music to the spaces and ledger lines above the G clef, if you aren't sure of what you're doing. The three parts for the right hand should have their single stem facing up, unless when the rhythms aren't moving together. The position of your first top note will affect the shape of your melody. When you find that your melody is not as interesting as you'd want it to be, you can erase everything and start again. Don't shade your notes as you realize. Use faint strokes and you'll shade them when you're satisfied with your realization. This will make corrections by erasing easier and will help you in handing out a clean paper. In this post video, we're realizing for keyboard on paper. I will use a pencil and paper for illustration because this is how you'll do your exam. This is the score with figured bass that I'm going to realize. I'll show you the steps that I personally take to solve a question like this. I will also inform you of the rules that I have in mind when I make decisions. So let's get started. This song is in C major. How do I know that? Because of the absence of the key signature and accidentals. If G was sharpened, then the key would have been A minor. The first thing I do when working this out is to make a table of triads of the key of the given piece. This is how I do that. I write the letters found in the key of C. That is C. To B, I will then write another line of letters on top of that, starting from the third of C. And another line on top of that, starting from the fifth of C. This will form seven triads. I will write the chord number below each of them. This will help me to know the chord progression of the piece. It will also help me to know the notes to realize above the given bases. I then will write down the figures in full, so that I don't have to do a lot of calculations while realizing.
starting from the first bass note, I'll write the chord number below each of them. 5-3 is root position, so the bass note is the tonic of the chord. So, this is C. Chord 1. 6-5-3 is a first inversion of a seventh chord. So the tonic is a third below the bass. This is G seventh. Chord 5 seventh. Back to C root position. Root position again, this is G major chord. Chord 5. Root position again, A minor. This is chord 6. Chord 5 to chord 6 will require special attention. The third will be doubled in one of the chords to avoid consecutive perfect fifth or octave. 6-3 is a first inversion. The tonic is a third below the bass. This is C major. Root position chord 4. Root position chord 2. 7-5-3 is a 7th chord in root position. Chord 5 7th. How do I know these chords? The table of triads that I created earlier has all this information. I will now write the notes that I need to realize. You do not have to do this. Since you can read the notes at the triads table. Above each bass note, I will write the notes that make the chord. Again, I'm using the table of triads that I created earlier. I feel like I should start with this progression here. Chord 5 to chord 6 may give us a headache later. I want to solve this first, then I will make the rest of the harmony fit with this. Chord 6 has A, C and E. A is on the bass. I now need C and E. How about if I give C to the top part? For reasonable spacing, E will be fine on the first line. In this progression, it is either I double the third here or I don't double anything. This is root position chord 5. G, B, D. We already have G on the bass, so I will add B on the third line. D can either be below the stave or on the fourth line. I prefer the fourth line for one main reason. Contrary motion with the bass. If I write the D below the G clef, I will end up with consecutive parallel fifth with the bass. I have an opportunity to double the tonic here. The G will move well to the E on the next chord. If I double E on chord 6, I will again have a consecutive perfect fifth. I am making faint pencil strokes so that erasing will be easy. I will shade them once I'm satisfied with my realization. Now I can make a good decision on where to start my melody. Looking ahead, I think I can start my top line on C or E. I want to use contrary motion, especially on small bass melodic intervals. So I want a place that I can go up and then down on the second and third chords, because the bass goes down then up. Looking at my fourth chord, I think I can start from E. That will allow me to go up then come downwards towards the D on the fourth chord. If I start on E, I can go up to F on the second chord and down to E on the third chord. That sounds good. I will have a C on the fourth space, a G on the second line and E on the top line. I will leave a mark here, just in case I will change things later. This is a 5-3 chord and we've doubled the bass. Good. Second chord is a four note chord. We need all the four notes. We already have B on the bass. We need G and D and F. For contrary motion, I will have my G on the second line, D on the fourth line and F on the last line. A nice contrary motion. For my third chord, I can have E as my top note, C below that and a G again on my second line. Again, a nice contrary motion. 
It seems I'll not need this E down here. I will erase it. We have already worked out the next two chords. First inversion C major. We don't want to double the bass. That means we can not go up to E. We don't want to repeat the melody note C either. Next best option, down to G. That's a perfect fourth from the tonic and it is perfectly fine. Let's trace the melody line to ensure we'll end this well. The next chord can have an A on the second space. The following chord can have a D on the fourth line. The melodic interval is a perfect fourth. That is, from the submediate to the supertonic. No problem with that, as long as the melody note doesn't go up again. The best way to make compensation for that big leap, is to follow the supertonic note with the leading note then the tonic. Is this possible? Yes, it is. We can have a B on the third line, followed by the tonic on the fourth space. Very good. There is hope. I will now fill in the remaining notes. We need a C here. Best place to add a C is on middle C. What do we double? If we double C on the fourth space, we will have a dull melody line. If we double the G on top of the stave, it will be too far from the first right hand note. We shouldn't even think of doubling the third here. It is not the right thing to do. We'll leave it as it is. Next chord needs a C. We already have F and A. The best place to add C is on middle C again. What do we double? F is a good candidate. There is no problem if I add F on the first face. I'll leave it that way though. You'll see three note chords in piano music a lot. The next chord needs F and A. I already have D on the bass, and I doubled it on the top line. Next chord is a four note chord. G, B, D and F, I have G on the bass. I will add D below the stave and F on the first space. B is already on the top line. Last chord is C major. I have already doubled C so I need E and G. E on the first line and G on the second line looks fine. I have used contrary motion whenever possible. This makes me safe from creating consecutive fifths and octaves. Good to go. I'll now start drawing and shading my notes. Be careful to look at the note value on the bass line before you draw the ones above it. When you're in a hurry, you may end up drawing crotchets on top of a minimum bass. When I'm done with my drawing, I will use my small ruler to draw straight note stems. After everything is done, I will erase all the unnecessary writings. That's it. Thank you for watching this video lesson. I hope you've learned something. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so that you'll get notified whenever I upload a video lesson.